my beautiful Biafra people, how are they now? Yes, I have a video of our leader Mnandi Kano today, live video where he presented on Sahara TV. Yes, he spoke about a lot of things. He spoke about his meeting at the United Nations and the European Parliament. He talked about the issues that have been facing the Biafrans in Nigeria. And he also talked about the court case of the indigenous people of Biafra and South African police. Yes, in a bit, I will show you the video, but I want to let you understand something. Our restoration is very close. Yes, our restoration is very close. Our leader Nandekano has been working behind closed door to make sure that everything works perfectly well for us here in Nigeria and as we are getting prepared to leave Nigeria to our own various, you know, you know, places. Yes, as a matter of fact, we need to go to our land, Biafra. Yes, we need to go to our land, Biafra. Once we arrive, Biafra, then we will then know that this person is from Benue State, this person is from Imo, this person is from here and there. So, my brothers and sisters, let us not give up on this fight. This is a fight of restoration. We all have to join forces together to make sure that the restoration of Biafra will come to pass. Yes, Jubri has been trying everything he can do to frustrate us, but he will fail. He will fail because you can only de delay destiny, you cannot deny it. This is our destiny. Whether the uh, the government of Nigeria wants it or not, whether Jubri wants it or not, we are going to be free from this evil entity called Nigeria. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. Now they are trying to provoke our spirit so that when we react, they will say that yes, this is the reason why they prescribed us, but they have failed. They have failed because we are smarter than them. We know what they are trying to do, but they will not get us. As a matter of fact, here is the video. It is not entirely unexpected in a disgraceful and rather very shameless society like Nigeria. What happened to Shore shouldn't come to anyone as a surprise. It is the type of democracy that they practice which has no foundation or basis in the rule of law anything goes when you have people presiding over the affairs of nearly 200 million people with false certificates and affidavit what happened to so i shouldn't come to anyone as a surprise at all these are people who are not by their very nature civilized nor educated so they have a very primitive feudal mindset they are averse to dialogue and to discussion and to progressive ideas. All they understand is to kill and to loot. And that's what they've been doing and that's the, what they will continue to do. Maybe now that they have oil in the north, or so we are led to believe, they will leave all of us alone. Now, that's our okay, Let, let's go to uh, one of the charges, as I said in the intro. Um, the government is saying that you and Shore met in New York and you conspired to overthrow the government. Will you be able to tell us what you discussed and if the government is uh, making this up? Of course they are making it up. They will lock up anyone. And um, um, I hope and pray that the difficulties, or should I say challenges, that Aisha Bukhari is currently undergoing is not related to my last broadcast or penultimate broadcast where I praised her for her doggedness and her determination. The thing about this set of um, paranoid um, um, kleptomaniacs you have, the Fulani cabal, is that they don't understand how democracy is supposed to function. My discussions with Shore, um, we managed to put out in the open that same day following our meet. Anybody with any iota of conscience would want a place where they come from to be run properly. People want decent schools, you know, decent um, um, uh, hospitals, good roads, and job opportunities for the, for the younger ones who are coming up. Not everybody is, you know, privileged to be sent abroad the same way that my father sent me abroad, or like Joe himself who lives in America. Not everyone is, is privileged to be abroad. So we must cater and provide for people who are left to deal 
or should I say, to confront the very difficulties that Nigeria as a society have imposed on. So what we discussed, essentially, is about the welfare and the well-being of people who are trapped in Nigeria. People who are suffering, people who are in pain and in severe difficulties. And you would expect any conscientious person to be able to have that at the back of their minds when discussing, you know, um, um, human beings who are suffering under very intolerable and repressive regimes. So what we discussed were out in the open. So if it was a conspiracy, why would we come before the cameras to actually, you know, say or tell the public what we had discussed? That's the thing about it. It's just simple paranoia. I, I, I saw the gentleman who was on your show earlier, um, that wrote the author that wrote the book, we are all Biafran. You can see the extent of the paranoia, or the paranoia, I should say. He's traveled abroad, came back wearing a T-shirt with Biafra written on it, and they all went crazy. These are the sort of people that we are being forced to, to deal with or to confront on a daily basis. These are people who don't actually know what democracy, freedom of speech, or rights of people to freely associate is all about. That is Nigeria for you. And when we campaign for Biafra, some people don't understand it. We cannot live in a country with people who claim they're educated, but fail to appreciate nor grasp the very um, 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 final rudiments of what democracy is all about. Now, if in the trial your name will be mentioned, of course, I know you are aware of that. Um, what I am not expecting that the defense will call you, but just imagine if they called you, what are you going to say? Because the government is going to put the case that, okay, this is what they were planning to do in New York. What would you say? If, just imagine that you were called to, uh, by the defense. I will be deposed on that oath, of course. I will be deposed on that oath, and I will give my testimony. And what I will say to them is that my discussion with Shoura were entirely open and very frank. The same discussion you will have, you know, with anybody who is seeking to better the lives of their people. Shoura is trying to do the best he can to help ordinary poor Nigerians. I am doing the best I can to help restore Biafra. Mm. It's as simple as that. Mm. So we met to have a discussion because after all said and done, today Biafra is located geographically within the damnable construction called Nigeria. And Shore being an avowed Nigerian, um, wanted to have a discussion with me and we met and had discussion. It's nothing to do with about replacing uh, uh, Bukhari after Bukhari is there, this Jubil al Sudanese who is there. Why well, would want to replace the Sudanese? We just start to chase him, uh, you know, uh, to leave there and go back to, to, to Sudan. You know, Bukhari is not there. So this whole nonsense about trying to replace Bukhari is all about it, and they know this. They're just trying to look for an excuse to, to incarcerate him. And I am sure that uh, Tinubu is behind this. That is, I am absolutely certain that Tinubu is behind this. So very soon you will gain his freedom. His bail conditions will be and he will gain his freedom, and then um, the revolution will continue from there. I, I made it very clear to him that he will be incarcerated, he will be locked up, but he needs to remain very strict. He yeah. will outlast all of them. Mm. At means, the end of the day, Shogun will emerge as a hero of the Yoruba I assure you. Now, you said that Tinubu is behind. Can you give us um, your reason or the uh, evidence, you know, if you have any whites and you think Tinubu is behind his arrest? It is the same gang of people, the same very backward, very regressive, very corrupt gang of criminals. You have some of them in Igoland as well. Once they see... ...people emerge, people they feel are younger than them, people they feel should be within the age bracket of their children, they begin to feel threatened. Tinubu wants to run for the presidency come 2023, and he sees revolution now as a clear and present danger to that very ambition. So he did all he can to make sure that Shore is incarcerated. It's something that, you know, the likes of Ohaneze and the Southeast governors will do to anyone, I'm sure, even in the North. It's something that the Kaba would do to anyone trying to emerge to try to carve out some semblance of, um, of um, should I say, um, consistent agitation for the betterment of people uh, within that very society. That's what they do. They've been doing it from 1960. That's how they are wired up. That's what they will continue to do. It's the same everywhere. So the same nonsense you have that Tinubu is doing to show is what I've been encountering with those 
criminals you have in Biafra. It's, it's in their nature. That's the way they are. They want to run for the presidency, and every obstacle or every perceived threat or obstacle along the way will be eliminated. And that's the way they are. And that's what they have done. Can you see, or are people actually mindful of the ridiculousness of the of the conditions, of the bare conditions? Give the show. Can you believe that? Now, now the night are there now as a treasure, collecting money for the government. I wanted to I wanted to ask you that question because because you were mentioned as one of the reasons why they had to give that tough uh, condition. Uh, do you uh, think it's fair? And and uh, what do you think about that bail condition? That the conditions that were given to sugar. The type of bail condition you give to people that you do not intend to release. Before we even go to the bail condition, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that a competent court of law, the same man that they went to, the same Ty justice, Taiwo Taiwo that they went to, granted Shore unconditional release. Unconditional. That's the thing about black Africans and the way we visit, which I keep lamenting about all the time. We have something defective with our brain. We don't reason very well. Black people have something wrong with us. A court gave him unconditional bail. That very court ruling was not obeyed it wasn't obeyed at all by the cabal that run by abakiari and his gang that run nigeria now they have to take him to court again for a very stringent bail condition to be issued and now everybody's talking about children's bail condition not about the fact that he was previously granted unconditional bail didn't the same thing, that, didn't the same thing happen to you now no, no, and there was something that you said earlier which I had to touch upon. Okay. The the very criminal DSS, were relying on the fact that I am no longer attending the Danyako's court as an excuse or reason to deny uh, sure. or to campaign for sure not to be given bail or to argue for sure not to be given bail. But within their papers, they also clearly forgot, this is why I'm upset with Falan. They also forgot that the army came to my house on the 14th of September to kill me. I was due in court on the 13th of October. That is completely lost in the narrative. Mm. Completely lost in the discussion. Because that is what Nigeria does. They get you where they want you to be. Then they spend a lot of money convincing the media, trying to intimidate them into publishing their own version of the story. Now, I think in the case of show. The, 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 the area, or should I say the topic, that happened to be the fact that he was granted unconditional bail and that was not true. Now, the, the, one of the charges against him was this idea that he insulted the president. Uh, are you, do you concern about Nigerians being charged to court for insulting the president? And are you worried about that? I am not worried. The same charge was not against him. And during the prima facie phase of our case, it was thrown out by Bintanya. You cannot insult somebody in a free society. If that person feels sufficiently aggrieved, they should, you know, of course, have a recourse to the law. That's what they're supposed to do. You cannot, there is nobody called a president. There is no office that is called the office of the president being occupied now by Jubil, of course, in the name of, of Muhammad al that is somehow sovereign. No, it's a human being. If he feels aggrieved or insulted, he should consult his lawyers. And he says it's a private matter. Nothing for the state prosecutor to take up as a charge against somebody. They leveled the same pathetic um, charge against me and it was thrown out. All far I could have done was to make reference to my case and to say the same nonsense was brought up during my case and it was dismissed. Because it has no basis in law. But that is the thing about them. Both the judiciary, which I blame, the Nigerian judiciary is a complete and utter mess. They preside over these injustice, legalized injustice. They allow themselves to be used by the executive, basically to subvert not just the will of the people, but the constitution and judicial process. And that, is, that shouldn't be allowed to happen in any sane society. Keep allowed to happen at all. Now, okay, let, let's go to other things because there are so many things I want to touch with you. Um, now, the, you made a speech at the European Union uh, in Brussels. Uh, what did you tell them? And, and 
how did they receive that speech? Why is it that we don't have a video of you talking to them? Because a lot of people do not know the, the length that the Nigerian government will go to suppress our agitation of what they have been doing. Um, there is um, a, a particular country that we are having issues with. Once that is resolved, that will make everything public. People don't understand this. That within the EU itself, the United Nations, the various agencies that we have, and all over the world, the Nigerian government is paying billions upon billions of dollars to consultants and lobbies to ensure that our voice is not heard. We have a very tiny, small, should I say, insignificant project compared to what they have. But we are making very massive inputs. But what I can say to people is that at the end of the day, you will see the result of our diplomatic offensive. And the zoo will not survive. I'll show you. Okay. In, in Nigeria today, the battle for 2023 is on. Uh, there are a lot of people making statements. One of them is uh, Junaid Mohammed. And he said recently that Igbo people should go to hell if they don't, if they don't want to because they are denied presidency in 2023. Uh, that uh, if they want to succeed, they should succeed. What is your take on this talk about 2023 and Igbo people and the presidency? It's the same talk we've been hearing um, about since childhood, about reconstruction, rehabilitation, and uh, heaven knows what the R is all about. It's the same thing about the youths of today are the leaders of tomorrow. The same garbage, the same nonsense that never comes to fruition. Anybody thinking that the Fulani cabal will relinquish power to the South come 2023 is not only deluded, but we have the need to see a psychiatric you know, um, 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 doctor because they're not well mentioned. They will never do it. They have nothing, absolutely nothing. They have nothing. They contribute nothing to the economy. Absolute zeal to nothing to the economy. What do they contribute? I keep asking them all the time. When was the last time you heard about your Fulani rights? When was the last time you heard about your Fulani poet? Is it because of the of the of the almost the uh, hard work, the monopoly being run by Dangote? What do they contribute to the economy? It's absolutely zero. They can put enough. So they're holding on to power for their their lives because they understand that um, to relinquish. I mean, of course, they they had a bit of it under Jonathan. After Obasanjo and um, the brief tenure of um, Yeradu, like Jonathan Kemi, they were almost dying on a daily basis. They wanted it back by all means. So, the thinking that power is coming to the South in this single time. I would not allow myself to be drawn into this very debate because it is very childish. That means that our people have learned nothing. Anybody campaigning, anybody pushing for, um, for the presidency to be returned to the South is, is deluded. Quite frankly, I wouldn't even dignify them with any measure of um, contribution. The young would have said, right now. Do, do you do you think the same thing about this uh, Hanese group that came out and said that uh, people should forget about your movement and your group and Biafra and fight for Igbo presidency? That that's what's important. So those were the wise words of our leader Nadekano. Yes. This is a sign that we know what is going on in this, you know, evil entity called Nigeria. Don't be deceived that Biafra will not come. Biafra will come. A lot of countries have left their various countries and formed their own country. As a matter of fact, Cameroon was part of Nigeria, but they were free at the end of the day. So this is the same way that Biafra will also be free, my brothers and sisters. Thank you.